If you can imagine um, slave owners having full control over human beings, you could also imagine the difficulty that they might have in being able to maintain that control 24 hours a day, every day of the week, every month of the year. And so enslaved people found ways, both large and small, to basically avert the will of their masters. So Henry Box Brown was born in Louisa County, Virginia, around 1815, and both of his parents were enslaved. One of the things that's quite striking as he tells the story of his life is how his mother started to prepare him very early for what could possibly happen to him, um, what could happen to the family in terms of being separated. And those lessons were really seared into his mind quite early. By the age of 15, that moment actually came to pass where Henry Box Brown, at the time it was called Henry, um, was basically sold away from his parents and from his siblings, and he never saw them again. He was sold to Richmond, Virginia, and he worked in a tobacco factory. He met his wife, Nancy, in Richmond, and they became friends, and he said that their friendship turned into mutual love. And they both wanted to get married, but they also had to get the consent of their slave owners, their respective slave owners, which they did. The slave owner of Nancy basically promised Henry that he would keep her um, nearby so that he would never sell her from Henry. But that promise didn't pan out. Within 12 years of their marriage, they faced the ultimate threat. Nancy and the children were taken away while he was at work. He discovered that they were taken to the local jail, that they were being auctioned off, and they were eventually sold to a slave owner in North Carolina. That was, of course, the, the moment that they most dreaded. He was able to see his, his kids and his wife one last time. He did go to the jail, and it's a very um, distressing scene as he depicts it in his narrative because his kids are crying out for him to help. He's unable to do anything and he's literally holding on to his wife's hand, walking beside the wagon for like four miles until he's forced to part and never see her again. It's very difficult for Henry to imagine how to go on, like what should he do next? How should he live his life? His, his wife and his children have been taken away from him. And he has this vision of essentially running away. He comes up with the idea of mailing himself in a box to Philadelphia. He enlists the help of various friends and people in the community who are willing to help. He's a very large man. He weighs 200 pounds. He's five feet, eight inches tall. He is, he basically crams himself inside of a box and mails himself to Philadelphia. Through a very tumultuous physical journey, his box goes from wagon to steamboat to train, eventually arrives in Philadelphia 27 hours later. Then he is met in Philadelphia by several members of the local abolitionist community. And from there, he becomes an activist in the abolitionist circuit. He leaves Philadelphia pretty quickly, moves on to New York, to Boston, to other cities throughout the northern states. He's giving speeches, public addresses, essentially. He has a whole performance piece making the case that slavery is morally wrong and should be abolished. The thing that we most remember most frequently is his escape. But I think it's important for us to remember what was behind that, that act, what led him to that act. And so family was very central to his, his ambitions, to his um, desire for freedom, his, his desire to actually become a part of a larger movement to, to end slavery. And so I think we need to remember what enslaved people went through, what they were willing to risk for their families, to keep their families together, and, and also how they suffered. Slaveholders often perpetuated stereotypes about enslaved people um, with respect to um, ideas about their capacities to love, 
their abilities to create emotional bonds and sustain those emotional bonds. So marriage was one way that enslaved people challenged those stereotypes because these were bonds that actually were very important to them. They proved that emotional connections, companionship, love, affection were central to their, their sense of identity, their sense of belonging, and to their sense of what it meant to be human beings.